When I was trying to learn Photoshop, I made a painful mistake that costed me years of time and effort. I would spend hours every single day trying to learn Photoshop by watching YouTube tutorials, and it felt like my work was barely improving. In fact, it wasn't improving. This was incredibly frustrating and demotivating because I spent so much time trying to learn this software and I had nothing to show for it. This was my experience for years until I completely changed my learning strategy and once I did, my progress skyrocketed and completely changed my life. In one year, I went from making cringe-worthy images to having my own creative business amassing tens of thousands of followers who like my work. Here's exactly how I did it. So when most people start their journey of learning Photoshop, their first move is to start watching tutorials on YouTube, which is exactly what I did. I'd go to YouTube, look up Photoshop tutorial, and I'd scroll through the results until an impressive looking thumbnail caught my eye. I'd go through the video and follow each and every step to the T and I would make the final product perfectly. So I kept doing this over and over and over again, nailing it each and every time. Feeling pumped up, I'd finally start to work on my own personal project and it was horrible. It was frustrating because I saw such amazing results when I followed tutorials, but my own work honestly made me cringe. My reasoning for these outcomes was that I just hadn't watched enough tutorials, so I would restart the process and inevitably get the same results. I kept going through the same loop over and over again until eventually I made a huge change. I stopped watching tutorials. Don't get me wrong, I think there is a time and place for tutorials, but the reason I was seeing no progress was because I was trying to absorb information just for the sake of absorbing information. I had nothing to apply it to. I'd follow a tutorial and learn how to get from A to B, but when I started my own work, I didn't even have an A to start with. What you really want to do is start with an idea. Open Photoshop with an end goal in mind and let yourself get stuck. For example, maybe you want to cut someone out of a photo, so you try using a specific tool and it doesn't work at all. That is when you look for a tutorial of how to cut someone out. That way you're actively listening and applying what you learned. You have to get that information to stick because otherwise you'll never get over that obstacle. The idea behind this strategy is that you want to start making something with a goal in mind and deliberately find things that you don't know how to do. This will prompt you to search for those answers. This also forces you to focus on step one instead of trying to cram steps one to a hundred in your head all at once. Honestly, I don't think following tutorials is a bad thing at the very beginning, but I do think your goal should be to get off of them as soon as possible. Watching tutorials without an end goal in mind is actually a lot like driving somewhere. You could look at a map and memorize every turn and street name, but when you get into the car to leave, it's extremely unlikely you'd know how to even get to your destination. It's only after driving towards your end goal do you really learn what the route is. You take wrong turns, you subconsciously notice buildings and points of interest that you drive by, and you get a sense of how long it takes to get there. It's the exact same idea as when you're learning Photoshop. You need to start and then learn. Don't learn and then start. I think that when I started learning Photoshop, I didn't realize that learning came from failure. Following a tutorial using these perfect images to create this very specific effect wasn't giving me enough failure or any obstacles for me to overcome. Doing this will force you to retain more information and build up your muscle memory on how the software works. But anyone who's ever gotten serious about learning something new knows that doing the actual work is only half the battle. The most difficult part for most people is just opening the software and starting. Holding on to that initial motivation to keep learning is probably where most people fail. Fortunately, it doesn't have to be. Beginning the process of learning something can honestly be a huge uphill battle. We have to consciously memorize information, do research on simple tasks, and we'll inevitably spend tons of time going down the wrong path. This is also paired with the aspect of constantly being disappointed with your final product. I mean, the reason we start learning something like Photoshop is almost always because we're inspired by something. You'll be scrolling through Instagram, Behance, or ArtStation, and some amazing piece of work will catch your eye. You think, I want to do that and feel so motivated to get to that goalpost where you can make something as cool as that. In the learning process, you work so hard to create different things 
over and over and over again, each time chipping away at your initial motivation every single time. Thoughts start filling your mind like, maybe this just isn't my thing, or maybe this is a waste of time. After all, time is our most precious resource. Every minute we lose, we'll never get back. The days or weeks or months you spend learning something that you won't stick with or will never pay off, by definition, will be a waste of your time and really, a waste of your life. That got kind of dark. <laughs> but what I'm saying is probably relatable to anyone trying to learn something new like Photoshop. I personally went through the exact same process and I can confidently say that learning is not what creates that soul crushing grind. It's your learning strategy. Before I tell you how to learn faster and more effectively, I think it's really important to understand why learning something like Photoshop can be grindy and tough. To do that, we'll compare to something that's definitely not grindy and tough games. When we play games, whether that's a video game, a board game, a game on the playground, or a drinking game with friends, you don't really feel that uphill battle. That's because games are fun. But why do we find them fun? And why are certain games considered fun while others aren't? This is because of something called gamification. Now we could go pretty deep on the concept of gamification, but the main thing that I want to highlight is the fact that something is considered fun based on their challenge to reward ratio. When something is too challenging, it's not fun, but the same goes for something that's too easy. An activity or game is considered fun when it delicately runs the line between challenging and easy. For example, throwing a ball in the direction of someone isn't really fun at all. The same could be said if you were to try and play catch with someone with your eyes closed. It'd be too hard and you'd almost never catch the ball. Playing catch is fun. Throwing and catching the ball effectively is the challenge and doing so successfully is the reward. So to make something like Photoshop less grindy and tough, we need to make it fun. To do that, you need to make things in Photoshop that are easy enough for you to complete, but are also difficult enough to actually force you to put some effort into it to succeed. So trying to copy that amazing piece of artwork that initially inspired you to start learning Photoshop will most likely be way too hard for it to be fun. What you want to look for is something that inspires you, but also feels just out of your capabilities. Personally, the best way I've accomplished this is by creating a library of other people's work that I can either copy for practice or create my own variation of. In my spare time, I'll scroll through websites like Pinterest, Instagram, Artstation, or Behance, and constantly be liking and saving anything that inspires me or I feel is just out of my capabilities. I do this constantly. When I'm waiting for an appointment, on the toilet, or just when I need a break from work. See, when I started learning Photoshop, half of the battle was just maintaining the motivation to just open up the program. When you start learning something new, that motivation is pretty strong, but after so many inevitable failures and obstacles, that initial motivation starts to fade. Making the learning process fun helps maintain that intrinsic motivation, but for most people, making the process fun 100% of the time might be unrealistic. This is why we need to maximize each type of motivation so that we have as many forces as possible pushing us to learn and improve. There's actually six different types of motivation, but for the sake of not making this video 99% about motivation types, we'll just focus on three. Intrinsic, extrinsic, and identified motivation. Intrinsic motivation is when you're motivated to do something because you inherently find it meaningful to you and it brings you joy. This is another aspect as to why making the learning process fun is so important. When something is fun to you, that force that's pulling you away from Photoshop trying to convince you to play video games instead is much weaker. External motivation is when you don't necessarily want to do something, but you have something outside of your personal desires pushing you to do so. This can either be a reward you'll receive for accomplishing the task or a punishment that you're avoiding. It's the cliche carrot on a stick type of motivation. Now we don't necessarily want to start integrating punishments into our life, especially with something that's supposed to be fun like Photoshop, but I do think that creating a reward system is perfect for any type of creative work. Here are two ways that I maximize external motivation. The first way I do this is with social media. Everyone knows that these social media platforms are hooking us in by constantly rewarding us with dopamine. Even though this can have a negative effect on our well-being, we can actually 
change how we interact with these platforms so that they help us instead of hurt us. I started posting my work on Instagram, Twitter, ArtStation, and sometimes Behance. If you want to just use one, I definitely stick with Instagram as you get a lot more feedback that way. The more I posted, the more my engagement and follower count grew. Eventually, I created a schedule where I would try to post another piece of artwork every week to stay consistent. The external motivation reward came from the positive feedback and dopamine I was receiving whenever I gained a follower, received a positive comment, or some of my work got a lot of likes. Society always kind of puts a negative light on the idea of doing something for positive attention through social media, but I think as long as you don't let the lack of positive attention affect you and you don't compare yourself to others, I think you're safe. Just remember that you're posting your work to help you learn. You're not learning to post your work. The second way I receive external motivation is through client work. Now, if you're just starting to learn Photoshop, this type of motivation might take a while to build up, but I think it'd be a great idea to make it kind of a goal for yourself to find clients. I know freelance work isn't for everyone, and if you honestly have no desire to do it, then that's totally okay, but I think freelance work is an awesome type of external motivation for a lot of reasons. When someone is paying you money to make something for them, there's actually a lot of different things pushing you to finish a project. Since there's an exchange of value, you end up wanting to put more effort into that project so that your client feels like their money was well spent. Also, there's always almost some type of deadline that the project needs to be finished by. Personally, I've also found that when I'm creating a piece of digital art for a client, their requests often push me outside of my comfort zone and force me to learn things that I don't already know how to do. Maybe a lot of you will relate to this, but I feel like sometimes when I'm working on a personal project, and I have to do something time consuming or difficult, sometimes I just won't do it. But when someone is literally paying you to do it, you can't really avoid it. Finally, the third type of motivation we want to optimize is identified motivation. This is when you're motivated to do something because it relates to something that's important to you. In this case, learning Photoshop is the thing that would be important to you. The way I optimize this type of motivation is by creating a routine. Every morning at 7 a.m., I'd wake up and immediately start working on my personal projects in Photoshop until I started my full-time job at 9 a.m. Now, you don't necessarily have to work on Photoshop for three hours every morning, but you should definitely create a daily routine that works for you. Whether that's working on Photoshop for 15 minutes before bed or for two hours before work. As long as you get that minimum amount of practice that you set for yourself, I promise you will see huge improvements. As long as you stay consistent, that daily practice will have a compounding effect and your skills will skyrocket. Having a daily routine like this is one of the strongest ways to keep yourself motivated through the learning process. Although you might not feel like you want to open Photoshop every single day, the motivation to stick to your routine is what's pushing you forward. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. I personally hate brushing my teeth, but I do it twice a day, every single day, because it's just part of my routine. Sticking with your daily routine of learning Photoshop over time will yield you the exact same perspective. A few years ago, I thought where I am now with digital art and Photoshop was completely unattainable. I thought it was for people who are naturally talented or super creative, but in reality, those thoughts are only symptoms of my brain trying to discourage me from doing something difficult and challenging. I feel like a lot of people that are on the same journey as I am trying to learn a creative skill can probably relate to this. I made this video in hopes that I could share my experiences and knowledge in hopes that you guys don't have to make the exact same mistakes that I did. I'm going to be putting the upload date of my next video in the banner of my channel as well as promote it on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. But if you want a notification for when my next video comes out, when you subscribe, if you click the bell button, then I'll send you a notification and you'll know right away. Okay, thank you for watching the video. See ya. <laughs>